Hi, my name is Richard Bilderbeek and I will be telling you about regular expressions and test that as part of a chapter in a tutorial by the TRES group in, at the University of Groningen about tidyverse and I'll be talking about regular expression and test that. Um, what are those things? Well, the goal of this chapter of this video is how to express your ideas as a regular expression and how to use them and also verify that you did so correctly. And that is important because knowing the basics of, ready, of regular expressions allows you to use libraries that allow you to do so and that's better and faster than handcraft uh, code yourself. And also being able to test makes you uh, 50 to 90 percent um, you spend 50 to 90 percent of your time debugging and if you write your tests first you'll um, speed up there uh, quite some bit. So what are regular expressions? A regular expressions or a regex is a sequence of characters that define a search pattern such as a zip code, a date or anything that is something. For example this is a Dutch zip code um, here you see a Dutch zip code These, those are always four numbers, a space and always two uppercase characters. And that's a Dutch zip code. And uh, this is how the regular expression looks like. So you see the word digit here, you see four here, you see a space here, space is part of it. Um, you see upper for uppercase probably, and the two probably for uh, those are two. And the applications of them are many. For example, here we have some DNA data of some kind of virus with its DNA sequence for some things. Um, some proteins. Uh, and here we have some protein data from another virus and here we have the protein sequence. But also most Excel sheets uh, there are uh, patterns in them um, with regex you can extract them more easily. For example here we have dates, also the date yes it's also it's apparently a date here. Uh, you see they're differently formatted, it's a bit of a messy sheet. but Also a percentage here um, so those are some regular expressions. And within R um, you can use uh, the stringer package which is part of the tidyverse version but you can also use egrep, grapple, gsub and all their friends which is part of base R. And the danger of regexes is that they have different dialects such as POSIX and Perl and within R there are already uh, two dialects but you can also or even more because you also with base R you can pick which dialect which includes Perl again. Therefore to be sure we do the right thing we'll have to test. And testing is already uh, an extensive subject on its own so this guy wears a cap with three caps actually the blue one at the back you can't see uh, but he's now um, trying to break his code by writing a test that fails. Now after that he'll fix it and after that he'll check it in. Uh, the reason why people test is because you want to be sure your code is correct. Uh, you want to spend less time fixing bugs because if you write something new and you already check the bugs at that level immediately um, that will save you time um, when, you when you find a bug um, when your program is, has already gotten very big. Also a test is a unit of communication. You'll already see that in this video and test forces you uh, to write functions that have a clean interface. That means that they're easy to use because they are testable uh, inherently. So many good things here. And I'll show you some tests. So we'll be using the test that package. Uh, it's not formally part of the tidyverse but it's used in all packages or most packages. So here's how a test looks like. You expect something to be true. For example 1 plus 1 equals 2. That should be true. It is. Uh, expose, expect false when it's not true. For example, cat, cat equals a dog, that's definitely false. Expect equal tests if the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. And this is how it looks if it fails. It says, hey, user, 1 plus 1 is not equal to 3. Um, there's one mismatch, and it shows you also uh, the different values and the difference. So, with these basic tests, we can already test. Uh, for regular expressions. So the first thing we'll be doing will be detecting a full match. Uh, the 
the simple patterns. And then we're going to use one submatch, multiple submatch, what those are, mutate, test for matches, bigger picture resources. So there's a there's a cheat sheet developed by our studio, which calls is called work with strings. And I'll be using that in this tutorial um, because it's very convenient. Um, so there are some functions, there's a section called detect matches. And here we can see what it does. We'll be using strew, strew which, which if you have four things, then it will give you the indices of the, the things that match your pattern. And I'm going to demonstrate this. For example, if we have three fruits, three pieces of fruit, an apple, a banana, and a pineapple, then we expect to be equal um, of the fruit to find a banana at which index. Well, banana is at the one second index, so the second fruit is banana, and that means expect equal how many th fruit is it second. So that's a bit how you uh, read those things, so what comes out of true which will be a two. But in this line, true which fruit apple, and there will be two matches, one for apple and one for pineapple, so true which fruit on the apple will give two matches, uh, one and three, because these are the first and third fruit. If however I use true which on the fruit for when looking for a submarine, I'll find uh, no results. Uh, designated by integer 0, that's uh, what R returns if it can't find a thing in this function. So um, I'm going to, um, I'll, I'll show you an example exercise, so uh, there will be more, more exercises here, so you can go them, in this video I'll just go through them quickly. Um, and that forces you, uh, like I'll go up step by step, uh, first of all, in this exercise I'll show you anchors. So here we're going to write a function called has a1 that detects if a character vector contains at least one one. And that means, um, so this is English, but in, in English, in, in, in R it looks like this. So has a one on one, this sh should be true. But it must contain this one exactly. For example, 11, you could argue it has two ones. Um, but no, um, this are, these are two ones. Also, this character vector has one one. This one has an eleven. All right. So the function has a one should return true for when there's a one. When there's something else in the one, uh, when there are two ones, should also have show has a one. An x is not a one. An eleven neither. Integer zero is not a one. Null is not a one. And a is not a one. So that's the exercise. So we're going to write a function for that, and I'll, below I'll show you the, the, the function body a bit. All right, to do it, we're going to use regular expressions, and what we'll be introducing first are the anchors. Also, this part is a screenshot I made from the cheat sheets, because a one is um, has a start um, because we're going to look for a one, not uh, not the one in eleven. No, it should start with nothing. It should start with the one and end directly after it. So you'll need anchors uh, to do that. And this is the function. This is a stop, but uh, go ahead and use your own function body. Uh, the function is called has a one. Uh, needs some text in it. This is what it works on. And I'm going to use string which on that text. Uh, you put your regex here. And then it will give number of matches, and the length of those matches should at least be one, because then we have a one, one or more ones. So the main question, because that's the the idea of this tutorial, um, what should your regular expression be? So that's why I give away the function body, and uh, because it's not about writing functions, you should just put the regular expressions for a one, and that means um, that's a regular expression that is, well, it's just a one, so it starts with a one and ends directly afterwards. All right, so it's very trivial, but it's uh, it's a first step. Well, now you've done so. This is the answer. 
So this is the regular expression for a one. So a carrot, that means signifies the start of the word, a one, and a dollar which signifies the end of the word. And here are the tests. So notice that these tests are in green, and these tests have no color. That means these tests are not run, but these tests are run. And that means that, for example, if I would make a f uh, an error in this function, I would detect them already here. So I can be sure that this function really does all this, else I would not have been able to show you this document. So that's great. Uh, you don't need to be, yeah, you should be, like, of course I can cheat, but, uh, like, I can show you even the code, but I don't. Um, of course, one thing. Is, um, perhaps you use the different regular expressions. I have no idea how you would do that, uh, but in case you did, uh, that's no worries. If all tests pass, you did a great job. Also, perhaps your function body is different. Perhaps you've used true count or true subset or true match. That's all fine. Again, if all tests pass, you did a great job. That's the idea. In the end, it doesn't matter how you exactly write that function as long as it's correct. Um, so that's the idea. So now we're going to step it up a bit with the exercise has a digit, in which we're going to introduce a character group. So we're going to write a function called has a digit that contain that detects if a character vector contains at least one digit. And with one digit I mean really a zero or a one, but not a twelve, because twelve contains is is a, contains two digits. But for example, one and two, that contains two uh, one-digit characters. Also an X and a one, well the one is a digit, a one-digit digit, uh, so that's fine. But the 12 again is wrong, that's not what we want. Also an empty string is not a digit, an X is not a digit, an empty character is not a digit, null not, and A is not. So the question is how do we specify a digit? Well, uh, on the on the string or cheat sheet, um, we see this graph, this picture, and there's a signifier for a space, blank, graph, punct, elf num, digit, alpha, lowercase, uppercase. So apparently to, spe to select for 0 to an including 9, we can use this syntax in our regular expression. So and here's the stop of the function, um, but of course feel free uh, to use your own function body. So this is exactly the same, but now you have to use, it has a different name, has a digit, and your regular expressions should be different. So what is a digit in our case? Well, it starts with a digit, and then directly ends. So that will be uh, our solution. So if you scroll down a bit, this is how it looks like. It starts with a digit and then ends. So again the carrot, the character group, in this case a digit, um, and here the dollar sign. And again all these tests are green, these characters are green. This will work happily. In the next exercise we'll be using a quantifier. We're going to write a function called has a word to detect if a string is a word, is one word. Um, we're going to simplify things. So a word is defined as having one or more lowercase characters and has no dashes nor numbers. Um, so that means um, like a city name is not a word in this case, but um, I want to keep it simple. So that's why I just keep it like that. Um, so that's exactly what the tests show. For example, A is a word, N is a word, Apple is a word. Um, N and Apple, those are two words, but a nothing and an apple um, those two uh, characters, they indeed contain a word, uh, which is apple, but x is not a word, hi is not a word because the i is a capital, empty character is not a word, a null is not a word, and na is not a word. And we're going to use quantifiers. So a word is a lowercase character, and we already show, seen that lowercase characters are here, and a word is one or more lowercase characters. And that should be put in this function, has a word, 
with your regular expressions. Also, um, if uh, the test text would be a space apple, that should also fail. Uh, it should be a word. So, um, so it should start with one. It should start with a lowercase character. It should have one or more of them, and then should end. So now you have all the information to write this function yourself. And if you have done so, this is the answer. So to detect a word which contains only of lowercase characters, it should start with a lowercase character, uh, of which one or more, and then it should end. And all the tests pass happily. So in the next exercise we're going to use alternates. So we're going to write a function called hasDNAsec, which is shorthand for hasDNAsequence, that detects if a character vector contains one or more DNA sequences. We're going to make it a bit easier for ourselves. So um, there are four characters. Um, DNA sequences have contained out of four characters, uh, one per nucleotide, whatever those are. And these characters are all uppercase, they are A, C, G or T. And these, for example, are tests that should pass. For example, A is a DNA sequence. Um, also A and A is DNA sequence and CGT as well. Um, here we have um, two strings. This one is not a DNA sequence, but this one is. So that's why it has a DNA sequence. And X is not part of a DNA sequence. Empty character is nothing. Null is nothing. And A is nothing. And to specify we want an A or a C or a G or a T, we have to use, uh, uh, like each character should be one of A, C, G or T. We're going to need this uh, alternate. Um, and this is how the function should look like again. So the function is called has DNA sequence. And your regular expression should be here, should be at least one match for it to be valid. So this will look simply like this. So a DNA sequence looks like it starts with um, one of the four uh, uppercase characters um, one or more times and then it ends. And then we can see all the tests. Pause. Alright, now we're going to uh, step up a bit because now we're going to use submatches. So up until now our every uh, string was completely matched or not. Now we're going to match part of our strings which we call a submatch. And um, this is again from the cheat sheet. Uh, there are multiple ways to get your subsets. Um, you can get the subset which means that you only get the strings that are matched or you can um, uh, we will be using string match which is the most versatile but therefore the most complex one and string match I'm just going to demonstrate it allows you to extract multiple matches at once so here we see the text um, these are clearly three dates but the second one is not a date and this is what the call to string match does. So if we do string match on the text with this big regular expressions, we get this character vector. And what we see is there are three rows, which is one per line. We already see that the middle one is an A, because well, it's not the date. And then we see one, two, three, four columns, in which the first column shows the full date, like the full text to signify, yes, there was a match in this uh, string, but the second, third and fourth column show submatches. So the first submatch is the year, second the month and the third the day. Well, in the submatch we indicate this with a round bracket. So the, that's, so the first submatch goes from this bracket open, four digits, bracket close, and then the slash because that was used as a separator in the date. The next submatch will be two digits and then a slash 
and the third submatch will be two digits again and that's how we extract uh, our submatches and for exercise to use some real world data we'll be using a DNA sequence so this is a virus and um, this is how the, the text file looks like so here we see DNA and we see some descriptions here as well and this is the DNA sequence uh, this is the virus name and there are more uh, host species name country of host etc also we know because um, that there are 30 sequences and that the text file contains 180 lines um, I use these uh, words to just be able to test in closer to English instead of using 30 and 180 so from our DNA sequences first we're going to extract I'm going to demonstrate how to extract a character vector from a submatch so I'm going to get from our dates one column for example if I want to extract the years of this example then I'm going to extract um, two values so I'm going to get to the correct column and I'm going to remove all the NAs so I only want to have the proper matches and for this real data I'm going to do it like this so if I match um, my text which is the DNA sequence for a greater than sign and then dot star dot star means everything because a dot means something star means uh, zero or more hits so it, so a line matches if it starts with a greater than sign and then anything and this is how that the lines are selected so we expect that the result is this is a matrix still it has uh, as much lines as uh, there are as many matches as the, the text has lines there's only one column because we don't have sub matches and here I'm going to show the first eight um, but we want to get the sub match we want to get this thing so that means we're going to extract again the greater than sign then anything and then the anything between round braces and um, so we can only extract what's behind the greater than sign and that looks like this now we suddenly have two columns because the first column shows the complete uh, string so that's the first column and the second column shows our first and only submatch which is everything behind the greater than sign but we want to get rid of the NAs so to get rid of the NAs you have to use NA omit and as character there are multiple other ways to do it uh, but I'm going to use this one so from the matches I'm going to select the second column uh, you can this is the same syntax but it should be space behind the comma and from that you get all the matches as a character vector now and now we have as much matches as there are sequences in our file and this is how it looks like and instead of doing this in this many steps we can do this in one go um, so this is all how it looks like so we're going to match our text for this uh, regular expression with one submatch dot star and we get the second column uh, which is only that submatch and from that column we're going to omit all the NAs and convert it to a character vector else you get some attributes that you don't need um, and then we have our matches here so this is what we'll be using in a function of course so as an example exercise we're going to extract the DNA sequence number uh, the, the DNA sequence numbers and um, that's uh, easy so that those are this thing this thing only the first things before the uh, pipe symbol so we're going to extract it uh, so when we extract those DNA sequence number there will be as much sequences as there are sequence numbers uh, because we know that to be true we also check the first DNA sequence number should be this one and we can also I also check the last one by hand I just copy pasted its value and that should be the last sequence number um, so this is a stop of the function and again you can use your own function body 
but this is the part where this tutorial is about. Your regular expression should be here. So to get to, uh, so I do use the second column, uh, but it can be any column. So for your regular expression, there are some hints. So the DNA sequence number is the text after the greater than sign and before the pipe Felina coronavirus text. And that's always the case. There's always Felina coronavirus after a pipe symbol um, in our data. And we can check for that. Um, but don't forget, this symbol, the pipe symbol, is also part of the regular expression uh, syntax. That means it's a way to specify an OR. For example, if you write A or B as a regular expression, it will match an A or a B. And so if you really want to use the textual uh, pipe character, then we have to use the backslash as an escape character. But because backslash is already an escape character in a string, we have to use backslash backslash. Um, in your regex. So that will make it a bit unreadable. Some languages have some ideas how to get rid of all this and this double backslash especially. Uh, but those are the hints. So you should write a regular expression for the lines that start with bracket open um, then a lot of, I think, alphanumerical characters. Yeah, actually any graphical sign, uh, also because also the dots are included. So it should be some kind of graphical character. Uh, so everything except spaces. And after that it should be Felina coronavirus. So that's how it looks like. And actually, so here it's a bit lazy of a regular expression. It just says, well, um, it should match the sub match um, of anything between a greater than sign and the text Felina coronavirus and then whatever comes after it. And that's how to extract our DNA sequence number. So let's see. Yes, our text uh, tests pass. One thing to notice, however, is that this regular expression does not work. So here we can see the greater than sign. Um, everything until a pipe. Uh, that's what one would expect. But that's not the case because the dot star will not go towards the first pipe um, but uh, the last one after which everything behind it will still work. What we say is that the asterisk is greedy. Um, there are some dialects in which you can say that it should not be greedy uh, but in this case I won't speak about this. I'll use this one. All right, so finally, um, this is the hardest exercise. We're going to use uh, multiple submatches. So we're going to use a proteome, which is not a DNA sequence, but a, a sequence of a protein. And here we're going to use proteins of a virus. And this is how it looks like. Again, there's a description of what the protein is. And here are, this is a protein sequence uh, split over three lines. And here's another protein sequence description and there's the sequence. And this is the data, it starts with greater than sp uh, bar, then the sequence ID, pipe symbol again, protein ID, space, and then the rest. And we'll be only looking at sequence ID and protein ID, so we'll be only extracting the first two. Also from this um, data, because it's a, a reference proteome, that means it's a standardized um, Proteome, it's, a, it's as used as a reference. Uh, we know that there are 13 proteins in this um, virus. So what we're going to use, we're going to extract all the proteins, ideas and sequence ideas in a table. So a table is part of the tidyverse. Um, it's, it's, a data, it's, it, it, it's similar to a data frame, um, but then in the tidyverse. And these are the tests that must pass. So if we extract the protein and sequence ideas from our text, we store that as in T, and it should be a table. There should be as many rows in that table as there are proteins. Because we get two things out of them, it should have two columns. 
because we extract a sequence ID and a protein ID. The column names should also be exactly that, the sequence ID and the protein ID. The first sequence ID should be that, the first protein ID should be that, the last sequence ID should be that, and the last protein ID should be that. You can just look it up in the, in the text file. Um, and we can assume that everything in between works, but you're never sure. But here's the stop of the function, and um, but go ahead and use your own one. So here I'm going to extract our match from a regular expression. So this will result in a matrix. And from that matrix, we're going to extract only the third and second, the, the second and third row. Uh, because the first row will be the whole match of the string and the second and third row will be first our sequence ID, second our protein ID. We're going to omit from all our matches all the NAs and then we have our matrix. We're going to give our matrix some column names as indicated by the test as well and then we're going to convert it to a table, uh, to have a table. So you could write return here, you don't need to, it's recommended not to write return at the end of a function. So how to extract this? Well, your regular expression should be something like it starts with greater than sp bar, then anything alphanumeric, there are no spaces in here, bar again, not a submatch for the protein ID, also um, all uh, graphical characters and space and stuff. That's how you should do your matches. Of course your first submatch should be this thing without the pipe. Second submatch should be this thing without the space. All right and just fill it in here. And this is how it looks like. So the submatch should be should have a greater than sp uh, pipe symbol. Then our first match that has graphical characters that are one or more, one or more um, graphical characters. Then another bar, then another submatch with one or more graphical characters, and then a space. Then only extract uh, the submatches. And then we have our matrix, we remove the NAs, uh, we give our matrix some column names that the table can use uh, to read and convert into a table. And then our tests all pass and we're happy. So there is also a way to mutate strings, um, that means to replace stuff, and I'm just going to show you uh, one thing. For example, if you have the word United Kingdom, um, we know it's not written like that, but sometimes people um, there, there are sometimes there's sometimes a reason why to remove the space. So let's say you want to replace uh, words like this, and what you want to do, you want to put a space in between the words, and the words start always with an uppercase and then lowercase characters. And between the two, you want to put a space. That means we're going to make a submatch for the first part, uppercase, at least exactly one uppercase one or more lowercase characters. That should be our first submatch. Our second submatch should be an uppercase character and one or more lowercase characters. That should be our second submatch. And then we're going to replace that by adding a space between our first and our second submatch to get United Kingdom. Well, our first submatch getting that is easy. That's exactly one uppercase character and one or more lowercase characters. And then again, an uppercase character and one or more lowercase characters, one or more of them. And when the, with the replacement pattern, you use backslash one, but because it's a string, you have to use backslash backslash, which means the first submatch and backslash backslash two means the second submatch. And that's and adding the space in between, then you get United Space Kingdom. That's great. Um, so replacing is also very useful. Uh, but I just wanna I just cut it out to make this video a bit shorter. 
so sometimes perhaps if you're like me you want to test if you have a if there's if a function returns something that should match a regular expression for example let's have this function called get version and we know a, ver a version is either 1.0 or 1.1 but whatever it is it should match this pattern a one dot and then a zero or a one um, but let's make it even more general a one a dot and then a digit well so we expect to match to have a matching regular expression on the version of a one a dot slash slash dot means a dot a real dot not a dot as in uh, can be anything but then uh, we want a physical dot there and a digit that sounds very reasonable but this will give an error and that is the case we can find that if we take a look at the documentation of expect match it says that expect match is a wrapper around grapple and grapple is the base R regular expression dialect and in the base or regex dialect you should use double square brackets to signify your um, character group so here we already have this problem with our dialects and there are more and that's why it's very important to test your work so that brings us to the bigger picture so this may probably makes it clear that um, like that you should perhaps develop in packages also when just doing a data analysis um, because um, you want to test your regular expressions if they're right uh, if they are correct and also when you read your data files they're probably messy and um, tidying them up should also be, can also be put in functions that you can test as well and there are many other uh, exa uh, many other benefits of using packages regular expressions are not only used uh, in R but for example these are some command line tools like grep or egrep uh, set stream editor uh, but if you do dir or ls to get your files you can also use like a yeah it's, it's called a globbing but similar to regular expressions also with regular expressions is that you should not overthink them if all the test paths you did a good job um, yeah, and yeah this is a comic about regex golf so some people um, make it a sport to make regular expressions that are as short as possible to pass all tests if you want to know more about mm, uh, other things I do um, you can find my R videos on YouTube and the R studio cheat sheets can be found here that concludes this video and I wish you a very good day bye <laughs>